Today, I'm finally going to upgrade the stock throw plate for my table saw with a zero clearance insert and splitter. There are a few reasons why you might want to upgrade from the stock throw plate to a zero clearance insert. So let me just go over that real quick. The gap on the stock throw plate is very wide. So that leaves very large spaces between the throw plate and the blade. This is a problem when you want to rip some pieces where either the cutoff is thinner than the gap here, or you want to be cutting thin strips. If the piece that's coming off on the side here is smaller than this gap over here, it will fall through and it's dangerous. So the zero clearance insert prevents that from happening. The gap in the zero clearance insert is just the width of the blade, so you don't ever have to worry about that. Now, if you are ripping thin strips or your cutoff is super small, you have no problems and you won't have pieces falling into your saw. Another reason why the zero clearance insert is great is for the quality of cut. Because it is fully supported on both sides of the blade, it reduces tear out and makes for a great cut. And the last reason why I love having a zero clearance insert is for accuracy. This is a very sturdy piece of material and it doesn't budge when I press down on it. The stock throw plate on the other hand. This side over here flexes a lot when you put pressure on it. So if you are ripping material and you have a push stick or something, <laughs> pretend they have a push stick and you're pressing along, you are putting pressure on this part of the throw plate and it's kind of going towards the blade, which affects the side of your cut and it's no longer 90 degrees. So the, having a super sturdy zero clearance insert like that totally prevents that from happening and it makes for super accurate and clean cuts. Before starting, you just wanna make sure that your blade is perfectly parallel to your miter slot. I will put a link to a video to show how to do this with my saw. Mine was good, so I went ahead, removed the throat plate, and I also removed the riving knife. I lowered the blade all the way down and then put the zero clearance insert in and then played around with the settings to make sure that it was flush with the table saw top so that when you're pushing pieces along, it doesn't hit against the table saw. Before cutting the slot in the zero clearance insert, you want to make sure that it's fully supported and it will not go anywhere. So I took a scrap piece of two x four and clamped it down to my table saw turned on the saw and then just raise the blade all the way up. That was very simple and easy to do, but there is one problem. The instructions for the zero clearance insert said that the factory riving knife for the model table saw that I use cannot be used with this insert. So they recommended I purchase the MJ splitter from Microjig. I got one that was specifically for a 10 inch thin kerf saw blade, which is what I was using. And this comes with all the hardware you need for all the installation, all the splitters, and a really long, confusing instructions manual. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to install this thing. The first thing to do is to create two setup blocks. It is preferred that this is made out of half inch MDF or plywood. So they are cut to four and a half inches wide and 15 inches long. The most important thing here is that the front edge of the setup blocks are completely square. Just to reiterate, these setup boards are four and a half inches wide by 15 inches long. Now I'm going to mark three inches up from the rear of the setup block, make a line and then mark it across. And then I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the second setup board. And after doing this, I mark the boards A and B just so I know which one is which. Next, I put the zero clearance insert back into the table saw and I set the blade height to three quarter inches high and then I set the fence to two inches away from the blade. Once the fence is locked down, you want to make sure not to move it until the end of the installation. Now here's where that three inch line I marked earlier comes into play. I'm going to rip the piece through the table saw and stop right at that three inch line. Make sure to turn off the saw and wait till the blade stops moving and then remove the setup boards. The rear drill guide base has a piece on it called the rear drill guide and you want that to be a little bit loose so that it moves from side to side. To make sure that you are attaching the drilling guide block in the correct location, there are two tabs on there that you have to put pressure on towards the fence. So I used a VIX bit to pre-drill all those holes to make sure that they were perfectly centered and then I locked them down with screws. 
started with one side and then again while putting pressure towards the fence I finished it off on the second side. And now you have to make a decision. There are two ways that you can set up the splitter. The first is just by doing a double splitter where one splitter is in front of the other and this is great for dimensionally stable stock like plywood and sheet goods. The other is a splitter kerf keeper combo which is great for hardwoods because it can prevent kickback when there's tension in your boards by lifting out the kerf keeper if tension ever occurs. More on this a little bit later. Depending on which setup is right for you, that's where you're going to lock down the drill guide. So I'm going with the kerf keeper, so I push the drill guide in towards the fence and then lock it down. If I was going to do the double splitter, I would push it away from the fence, lock it down in that direction. Next, raise the blade all the way and rotate the blade so that the first exposed tooth at the back is lined up with a three inch alignment mark on the setup board. Before drilling, you want to make sure that the setup board will not move at all. So you need to clamp it down to your table saw and make sure that the blade is still aligned with that three inch line. Lower the blade all the way and this kit comes with the drill bit that you need to drill all the holes. So you just follow the holes in the drilling guide block and you just want to drill super fast, one fell swoop, and all the holes will be in the correct location. You just want to chamfer them a little bit so it will leave some room for the splitters and you're done. Here's where that second setup board comes into play. You want to use it to test to see which splitters you want to use because they're all slightly different thicknesses. Again, I'm going to use the Curve Keeper and the holders for it did not fit in right away. So I just needed to ream the holes a little bit to make them slightly wider. And then after they fit in, I can put the Curve Keeper into place. So just to show a little bit how this works, if there's tension in a board, it starts to close in on itself and the Curve Keeper will lift up and then you could just turn off your saw and figure out another way to attack the cut. All right, so I'm gonna do a test between the stock plate and the zero clearance insert and see if there really is a difference between the accuracy of a cut. So I'm gonna to try to test on this piece of poplar and remember my cut off cannot be thinner than that gap when I test this. All right, looks pretty straight up oh, right in the center. All right, let's see if you can see this. All right, this might be difficult to show. So can't really see it so well unless you shine a light through. Do you see the light poking out through the corner next to the square? So that is a little gap that was left over because the piece was pushing in towards the saw a little bit because the throat plate was flexing. Now I'm gonna test the same thing with the zero clearance insert. And this time I can set my fence to create any thickness cutoff that I want because there's no chance it's gonna fall into any gaps. Perfectly straight all the way down the board. So there definitely is a difference between using the stock throw plate and a good quality zero clearance insert. All right, so that's it. A simple upgrade to improve the quality and accuracy of your work. So I'm really super happy that I have this now. I no longer have to put tape on my existing throw plate to prevent pieces, pieces from falling in. And I don't have to worry about any wonky cuts because of the flex in the throw plate as well. So this little curve keeper here, I think is genius. So huge thank you to Microjig for sending this out to me. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've started ripping a board and then it just stops on me and it gets super dangerous and there's a fear of kickback because the board starts closing in on itself. It's the tension from the board. So I wish that I could show this to you and show you how it works. But honestly, the reason why you need this is because you never really know when it's going to happen. So this little thing is going to pop out and go along with the board. And then I will see that there's tension in the board so I could stop the cut and figure something else out. So this is going to keep me really safe and I'm so happy that I have it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for some of you out there. And now I'm going to work on some more projects.